since last year, but the American Air Power Museum is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year, 2010. Thank you, Joe Saddam, back at WHLI, and uh, we're looking at Scott Plyman as he does a full aerobatic routine in this Checkville Aero L39 Albatross. Many versions of it have been produced. The original L39C model entered service with the Czechoslovakian Air Force back in 1971. And Danny Clisham, an air show announcer, Danny Clisham calls them Cold War Trophies. He's giving a big wave right now. The American Air Power Museum in Republic Airport, as I said, celebrating its 10th anniversary this year, is located right up the road at Republic Airport, and uh, they're the real deal. And they want to thank the people who helped sponsor them, including Stop and Shop Super. Now, I want you to look from the left, representing the Yankee Air Museum, coming in, one of over 12,000 B-17 heavy bombers built. They're going to do a special bomb run for us right now. Take a look. They're going to drop watermelons out of the airplane right now. Take a look. A bomb run here at the Beth Pet. Look at them come out. You see them? Slam it into the water. The B-17 Flying Fortress, as it is known from the Yankee Air Museum at Ypsilanti, Michigan. A C-47 built by Douglas, the military version of the DC-3, and on the wings closest to us, representing more birds over Long Island, is Chris Baranaskis flying the P-51 Mustang, and on the left wing farther out is Dan Damio flying the Curtis P-40 Warhawk. Think about the heritage around here and how coming through. North American Texan trainer aircraft. Curtis built the P-40 at the cost of about three quarters of a million, of a million dollars per copy back in World War II in 1944 dollars. If you convert that price to 2010 dollars, if you had the ability to set up a production line with another, here they come with another bomb run of watermelons. If you had the ability to set up a production line and all the tooling, it would each one of these bombers built today, today's dollars would cost three million four hundred eighteen thousand dollars. The C-47 now coming in from the left represents one of about 11,000 that were being built. Now some people will say, doesn't that look like a DC-3? The answer is darn right. The DC-3 was the civilian version of the C-47. They were built at about $138,000 a piece in 1944. That would be $1,709,000 in today's dollars. The T-6 is going by right now, or the SNJs, or as the Royal Air Force the Royal Canadian Air Force called it, the Harvard price you can't afford it. It is very, very expensive. And now coming in, the P-51 Mustang, five built for the United States Army Air Force, total production including the Royal Air Force. Nowadays, if you could build them for that price, it would be, up accounting for inflation, $668,891. And then coming through is the Ben Wayne Bird, the one that just passed. That's the F-4 Corsair. Right now at show center is the Curtis P-40 Warhawk being flown by Dan Damio from the museum. And another pass coming in from the B-17. It's known as the Bent Wing Bird. Designed that way because its huge 2,000 horsepower motor turned a huge propeller and to land it on the deck of a carrier they had to have a landing gear strong enough to keep the propeller from slamming into the deck of the carrier. We get the third bomb run of the B-17, between 3,000 to 5,000 pounds of bombs, and had a crew of 10 airmen aboard. Hundreds of these bombers would take off from bases in England, join up over the English Channel, and in formation, go into Europe to bomb German targets to stop the German war machine all through World War II. The C-47, which you see going by show center right now, has some very, very unique stripes painted on it. Those are representative of the stripes that were painted on all Allied aircraft, June 6, 1944. 
Those were painted on the airplane so our own soldiers and allied soldiers, including Canada and all the other countries who were fighting against the Germans during World War II, would not shoot down our friendly aircraft. Supreme Allied Commander Dwight D. Eisenhower, who later in 1953 became President of the United States, Dwight D. Eisenhower called it one of the five most important weapons in all of World War II. It saw extensive service in the Pacific Theater, flown from land-based units operated by United States Marines, the most memorable of which was Major Pappy Boyington. Corsair was inbound to attack Japanese targets on some of those islands in the Pacific. The Japanese called it the whistling death because of the incredible sound that it made. Lone Star Smoke Border. There's the Yankee Air Museum's B-17 Flying Fortress. At places like Mitchell Field and Garden City, the T-6 Texans that are coming through right now taught an entire generation of young Americans how to fly and fight for World War II. It was stable and strong enough to be used by thousands of young pilots who would be going on to fly fighters and bombers after their wartime graduation. There are some other aircraft at the American Air Power Museum that didn't make it today. The Power Museum has several unique exhibits that will never fly but deserve mention. And it's a tribute to the Tuskegee Airmen who had to fight a war, a two-front war, American segregation on the ground, and the Luftwaffe, or the German Air Force, in the air. There's a display that marks the efforts of women Air Force service pilots, or WASPs. They too were patriots who also changed our society for the better, flying many of the aircraft you see here today off to the war while proving that women can serve an active role in defending our nation. At this year's Memorial Day observance at 12.30 tomorrow, the American Air Power Museum will be conducting the nation's only memorial tribute to the seven CIA employees who were killed in the line of duty in Afghanistan in December. Participating in the memorial service will be U.S. Congressman Steve Israel and Michael J. Sulik, the director of the National Clandestine Service of the CIA. The B-17 Yankee Lady will receive flowers from 9-11 families. They will drop them not far from Ground Zero over the state, uh, over the Statue of Liberty. That's Memorial Day at 12.30 p.m at Air Powers Museum in Farmington. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look. The P-40 Warhawk, it is an, its history is incredible. Built by Curtis Aircraft, right here in this part of the country, it actually served with the Royal Air Force prior to the United States becoming involved in World War II. When we declared war on the Japanese on December 8, 1941, the day after we, that will live in infamy, that December 7, 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor. P-40s were also serving at Hickam Air Force Base during that attack, and several of them were able to get into the air to fend off hundreds of Japanese planes that were attacking Battleship Row at Pearl Harbor. Today's P-40 Warhawk is flown by Dan Gamio from the American Air Power Museum. The British Purchasing Commission went to the president of North American Aviation, Dutch Kindleberger, because North American Aviation Texans were being used as uh, called Harvards by the Royal Air Force, being used as advanced trainers. And the British liked the way North American Air, uh, excuse me, North American Aviation build airplanes so much that they said to Dutch, hey Dutch, we want you to build us P-40 Warhawks under license. And he said, all right, tell you what, we don't want to build somebody else's airplane. Give us 120 days and we'll give you a brand new airplane never seen before.
the British Purchasing Commission took uh, kind of winked, winced a little bit and said, all right, go ahead. And according to uh, most history books, 117 days later, they took a British Rolls-Royce Merlin V12 engine, the type that was in there, Spitfires and Hurricanes, and they said, we'll take care of that. We put it in there, and that was the air, the engine that was put into the Mustang that made the airplane what it is today. And over 15,000 Mustangs later, most of them had Packard built. That's an American motor car company, the old Packard motor car company. Packard built Rolls-Royce design to the Merlin engine. A couple minutes with more of the 2010 Beth Page Federal Credit Union Air Show right after these messages. There's Dan Damio. Give him away if you don't have a camera because he's looking at the shore. He just said, I'm out of here. Heading on back to Republic Airport. Coming up in a couple of minutes. We're going to see a flyby of uh, one of the Coast Guard aircraft.